What's going on today, YouTube? I hope you guys are having the greatest holidays ever. A lot of people watching these videos that haven't subscribed yet. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button right now. So let's go ahead and start with the parts that I use for this build. I got the ASUS Strix ROG Z490E. Not the best board, but it's like the second or third best board you can get. Fantastic value for the money, guys. It is an amazing mid to top end board. You guys are going to love it. And then, of course, I got the Intel Core i9-10900K or 10900K. Fantastic CPU for gaming. It is going to be the one you want because Warzone is very CPU dependent. More so than it should be, but it is. The game's also very hungry for memory. It needs a lot of RAM, which is why I got 32 gigabytes, two 16 gigabyte sticks, 288 DDR4. Now, this RAM is crucial ballistic. It has got a cast latency of 16, and it is 3,600 megahertz, which is more than enough for gaming. I recommend 3,200 through 3,600. You can go 4,000, 4,200, 4,600, even 4,800. For the hard drive, we got the Samsung 970 Evo M.2. It is super fast. Trust me, that's the best one and the best bang for buck right now. It's like 130 bucks anywhere you go. Sometimes it'll range from 130 to 150, but it's a great deal. I really like EVGA and Corsair for power supplies, but they're all sold out, every last one of them. So I had to go with the backup plan here, which is the Seasonic GX850 Gold 850 watt power supply. It's really kind of split in hairs between Seasonic EVGA and Corsair, I'd stay away from Thermaltake and a lot of the other brands. Really, Seasonic EVGA, Corsair, that's your best bets right there, at least for decent affordability. There's a few other brands that are kind of up there, but they're kind of hit or miss, and even with them, I've had issues. The last two dozen computers I've built since 2015, I have never had a single Corsair, Seasonic, or EVGA power supply go bad. None of them. Knock on wood. I'm gonna knock on the wood right now. Never had any of them go bad. <sighs> I hope I'm not giving myself bad luck here. What am I doing for the video card? Well, I had to do it, guys. I looked high and low everywhere I could possibly think of and even paid a little more than retail to get my hands on ASUS Tough Gaming RTX 3080 card from NVIDIA, 10 gigabytes of GDDR6X. It's a lot faster than the 2080 Ti, that is for sure. Then to cool it off, I got the Corsair QI-115i water cooler, 240 millimeter fans with LEDs, RGB, and it's a total size of 280 millimeters for the radiator. Then for the case, the NZXT 510 Elite, which in my opinion is the best looking case right now on the market. Market. So that's enough talk, guys, about the specs. It's time to pump it up, get Warzone going on, 240 frames a second. Now, if you guys are wondering about the monitor, I got a separate video on that, but I got the BenQ Zowie 27-inch, 240 hertz gaming monitor. That is the best 1080p gaming monitor on the market right now, or arguably one of them in the top three. It's my favorite monitor right now, so I'm going to go ahead and do a video on that for you guys as well. But let's get right down to building this computer so we can smash some Warzone at 240 frames a second. Are you guys ready? Let me show you guys how I'm going to build this computer. All the parts I use are below if you guys want to build your own computer the same specs as mine let's get going all right so here we go here's the nzxt case right here got the cooler memory processor board power supply extra fans hard drive video card arctic silver and the cable that i'm going to need to connect it to the monitor which is right over here we're going to get to building this stuff right now as far as mounting the motherboard this case is already set up as you guys can see right here there is no need to mess with it whatsoever very very easy guys we're gonna get these screws installed and there is three at the top three at the bottom and then there's one right here and one right here. So once we go ahead and get these screws in, we can go ahead and get this glass in the front off, get the CPU installed, the CPU cooler, get the headers for the fan controllers in the back. This motherboard literally just, as you can see, just slides right in and it fits like a glove right here, ready to go. These are definitely the 632 flat screws. That's the ones you're gonna wanna be using. And we're gonna go ahead and use the eight screws to fasten the motherboard. Be very careful, guys, not to over tighten these screws. I already have one installed here lightly. It's not snugged down just yet. Installing these is quite simple, guys. As you can see, this is the last one. So here we go, installing the power supply right here. The fan is going to suck up all the cold air from the bottom. We all know that heat rises. 
So it's gonna sit right back in here. Everything is lined up perfectly right there. You guys can see once I get that hooked up, we're gonna run the SATA connector and get these front panel connectors set up. You do not have to worry about this fan controller. You don't have to mess with any of these splitter connections because the output from both front fans is powering the bracket here or the splitter to the rear fans. So you don't have to mess with that at all if you guys are using this NZXT 510 Elite case. Okay, you guys can see I got the one, two, three, four screws installed for the power supply right there. It is time to start running all the cables to the motherboard and getting everything hooked up. All right, guys, back here, we got the EV01 connector. It's all the way at the back. And then right here, we've got it connected to the LED fans in the front. This is the SATA connector. Now it is time to get this cable tied up and tucked because we're not gonna be using this anywhere else because I have the M.2 SSD. I'm not gonna be installing any hard drives right now besides that one, so we're gonna neatly organize that cable. I have the connectors coming through the back. There's these little grooves on one side. Those grooves align right here to make sure that we're putting it in properly. There we go, that's connected. All right guys, on this USB connector, you can see right here there's one missing on the bottom left. And you'll see down here in the bottom headers, there is also one missing in the bottom right. That is where this cable goes. Goes in right down there. So now we've got the USB 2.0 header connected for the front. If you guys look right there, that is the AAFP front panel audio. That's where that connection's gonna go. Got the Corsair 140 millimeter RGB LED fan installed. It's gonna look a lot better and be quieter and more efficient than this crummy NZXT fan. Sorry, NZXT. It's just not as good as Corsair. I went ahead and connected it to the NZXT controller back here. With the proper programs and windows, you will be able to see the RPM of every fan installed in the case. This is the 24 pin connector. It's gonna go right here and then to the power supply in the bottom. Then of course your CPU, you're gonna need the eight plus four pin. So here is the first connection for the CPU. This one goes on the power supply and this is the four plus four, which will go right here, which is the eight pin slot. And here is the second one guys. And we're just not gonna use the second one. We're only gonna use one which is gonna go to this four pin. And that will take care of the CPU power as well as the main board power. And then we are pretty much ready to start putting the CPU, the cooler and the memory in, and then the video card. So let's get going. Time to connect this power right here, guys. Oh yeah. As you guys can see, the cable management system is pretty damn good on this case. These cables are gonna all be tucked away nicely, just like that. I've got the CPU power installed. The main board power is right here. I'm gonna start getting these cables organized and then get the CPU installed. Got the cover removed. I'm gonna be installing the SSD right here to the M.2. Now I'm ready to install the Samsung 970 Evo. Goes in right here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and screw it in place. So that's gonna pretty much finish up the hard drive. I got the memory installed, and then I'm gonna get the cover back on. The last two cables here to connect the front panel. Got the water cooler installed right here in the front panel with the 240 millimeter fans. Next, I'm gonna get the Corsair fans and stuff hooked up. The build is coming along beautifully. We're almost there, we're like 70%. CPU, cooler fans, graphics card, and then we're pretty much done. Got the cooler installed, video card, all the wires tucked, got the cooler set up in the front. If you guys are setting up the NZXT 510 Elite case, you can screw the fans reversed into the cooler. And then of course on the front, you can install the NZXT fans into the cooler as well. I really wanted to keep the CPU cool when I overclock it. Basically four fans in the front two on each side. What that's gonna do is help increase flow to keep the CPU cooler. This video card is so massive. Like, look at it, it's so huge. It kind of leans down on the right a little bit. Like, I hate that. It's a pretty straightforward build. I mean, this is no rocket science here. I mean, but if you've never done it before, then it can be a little crazy, but this is probably build number 200 for me. So it's very easy stuff. Wanted to share it with you guys. Just gonna finish tucking these wires, get the case together. And I can also change the cap here too, so that's gonna be pretty sweet. But hands down, water cooling is the only way that I will go for the CPU. Definitely the best way to do it. Finally gonna get the video card mounted and supported properly. It's from a company called Up Here, 
and it is pretty damn awesome. This is the bracket right here. You guys can see it mounts right by the video card here and then it supports it over here by the adjustable rubbers that we're gonna insert and the screws. There are two versions of the rubber mount, an extended one and a regular. I'm gonna be using the regular one. As you guys can see, it lines up perfectly with the end of the video card. If you have any grooves or a little bit of a gap up here that you need to fill, definitely use the extended one. The up here bracket mount installed with the rubber on the end. The video card isn't going anywhere and it is perfectly straight. It was literally sagging like crazy. This end of the video card was actually down here on my finger. It's about a quarter of an inch, maybe even a third of an inch sag on the end. And now it's straight. You can see it's even bending the arm, which is supporting it. It's craziness. Well, there you have it, guys. The NZXT 510 Elite crazy tinted glass like it's a lot darker than i thought it would be but it's pretty badass to say the least man this thing looks pretty good what do you guys think so sick so there is the bad mama jamma right there what do you guys think i think it's looking pretty damn good if you ask me just a downright epic build. I think it looks absolutely sick. It's really the most aesthetically pleasing case and lighting setup ever. I really dig this setup. I really do. It looks so great. What do you guys think? Put your comment below. Do you guys think it looks epic or what? I want to know what you guys think. Another really cool thing about this Corsair i115 RGB cooler is you can change the front plate out with one, two, three, four screws. And they give you the Allen hex key tool to do it with a new face cover. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now and just kind of see what it looks like. And you guys can see that I've got the support for the GPU here. The RGB rainbow wave going on right there. I got the black cap here removed and this is the clear one. And you're going to see how much different it looks when I put the black cap on. There we go. That's with the black cap. And then with a the clear cap right here, you can see it looks completely different. So two different style setups to choose from. If you guys are wondering if it's hard to get this glass cover off, it's not once you loosen the thumb screw, you just kind of pull on it gently. These retainer tabs are locked into the case pretty snug. So you don't have to worry about all the support of this glass relying solely on one little thumb screw. As you guys can hear, it clips right in. There's two of them, and then you lock this in place. So the glass is snugged into place pretty damn good if you ask me. So you guys can see I got my right hand man right there, and it's gonna be a lot better than console gaming, especially for Call of Duty, Overwatch, things like that, Rainbow Siege. It's just the better way to go on PC, which is why I told you guys I was gonna build it. The only thing I could have done to make this thing any better is a 3090. Good luck finding one. In fact, you can't even really find a 3080. I completely locked out. But at the end of the day, the processor after burning and testing seems like the sweet spot is 5.1 gigahertz. This way I can keep the temperatures at 70 degrees Celsius or below with the cooler on max and all four fans up front on max four times 140 millimeters just to keep the CPU at 70 degrees or lower. If I go to 5.2, it starts to jump around 75 to 80. If I go to 5.3, it's about 85. If I go to 5.4, it's well over 90 to 95, which is just too hot. If I go down to 4.9 or 5, it'll actually stay below 70, like 65. But the sweet spot is about 5.1 or 5, just depending on the temperature in the room. It seems like the voltage is a problem for these processors. In fact, all the way up to 5 gigahertz, 4.9, 5 gigahertz the processor's core voltage is around 1.35 to 1.42 somewhere in that area it fluctuates a little bit but it seems to be right around 1.4 once you go to 5.1 it's about 1.45 maybe 1.48 somewhere in that range once you go to 5.2 it's at 150 152 which is really that's it like it's way beyond where it should be anyway you go to 5.4 and then it sits about 1.58 or 1.6 i know there's some guys out there that are doing that I don't want to. I like to see my core voltage between 1.3 and 1.4, which means 5 gigahertz, maybe 5.1. It'll stay at or below 142 or 140. And with a temperature of 70 degrees or cooler, the processor is totally fine. So it seems like 5 gigahertz, maybe 5.1 is where I'm going to leave it. And I also ended up overclocking the memory. So it's sitting at 4 gigahertz stable. So that's pretty good for a cast latency of 
16. On CPU ID, single score it got 625 and multi-core it got 79, 78, depending on how cool the CPU is when I start the test. But that's pretty good. That's about the best I'm gonna get out of this system till I put like some massive cooling system on it much better than what I've got there and that ain't cheap that's like a hundred and ninety dollar cooler I got on there and it's pretty much the best you're gonna get for what it is so that's it it's a beast it really is I'm able to run Call of Duty Modern Warfare or Warzone everything maxed out ray tracing like every setting on absolute max 4k and I'm like getting legit stable 90 to 100 frames a second. I even peak around 110, 120. I could probably turn down ray tracing and tessellation and anti-aliasing a little bit. And if I tweak the settings, I could probably get 120 stable in 4K. 1080p on max, it's kind of like around 150, 160. Once I start pulling those settings down, it's really sitting in the 180, 190 on my 4K monitor. So what do you guys think of my epic gaming PC build? I want to hear your comments below. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. We'll see you on the next video. Be sure to subscribe. Lots of content coming, lots of streams. And of course, I'm going to be doing the unboxing video on the BenQ 240 Hertz Zowie monitor, the 27 inch. That's coming up soon, guys. Thanks so much for stopping in. Be sure to take care of yourselves. Peace.